long history of the Twin Cities PCC cars. There are almost no PCC cars in America that have kind of been around in this quantity for this long. And of course, the very first one in 1945 was Pittsburgh car 1547 that they diverted off the Pittsburgh order because they wanted to test a PCC car. And this car, car, of course, is different from 322 and the others because it is what they call an air electric. Um, it had air, air brakes, air doors, that kind of thing, where as 322 and all the others are all electric. And it also did not have the standee windows. It had what was essentially kind of the pre-World War II, World War II um, window configuration. So this is it at Snelling Shops in the red and cream. And the streetcar company did a fair amount of publicity. I ran this photo in Twin City Lines. Uh, this is Donna Turbis here, one of the two Turbis sisters who were motorettes. And I just love this picture. This guy is, uh, is the head, he's the superintendent. And so this is just, inside Snelling shops and posed for the newspaper camera. But I think she looks so cool there. And so of course to publicize it, you know, what do you do back then? You put young women in the car. And uh, so I'm pretty sure these women were employees like office employees or something of TCRT. There's another photo, I didn't put it in here, of a bunch of them in the front window of the car with a motorette looking out the front windshield. And I like this, here's a bunch of, of old white men, uh, probably businessmen or something, testing out the car. And uh, this particular cartoon from the newspaper, the, po the point of it was to advocate for uh, route numbers as opposed to just uh, route descriptions, but they took car 1547 and changed its color scheme from red to whatever this color is and put it in the paper. I thought that was kind of cool. So anyway, it was renumbered 299 and it ran until the end of service, looking different than all the other PCC cars based at Snelling. It ran on University Avenue and it was one of the cars that went to Mexico City. So this is it in front of uh, Kaufman Union with all the uh, temporary um, post-World War II temporary buildings. Do you know if it's still running in Mexico City? No, I'm sure it's completely gone. So, of course, here's Motorman Bill in a newspaper ad announcing, and you'll see it's University Avenue, which got the cars first. And here was a version of the logo from an ad with a, the modern PCC car. And here's the very first one, car 300 being delivered, came in on a railroad flat car, which is out of the picture, right? And they built up this cribbing to ramp them off. And here's a bunch of them coming in. This is a later order. The, you can see it's in the 400 series. But they came right into the property on flat cars from St. Louis. And of course, uh, 322 and all that other original group uh, were designed with conductor stations right inside the rear door. And <clears throat> Russ and I originally thought that they, that they took out the conductor station um, sometime during Twin Cities operation. We now think that 322 had the conductor station in it to the end of service in 53. And when it went out to uh, New Jersey Transit or rather public transport in New Jersey, that's when they got rid of the conductor station. We don't know for sure, but that's what we suspect. And so now I got just a bunch of PCC color shots. This is Hennepin in Washington, oops. Well, I have to do that. In front of the state capitol, out by 44th and Brookside. That's the Brookside Loop out here in the distance, Minnehaha Creek Bridge. This is looking west from Highway 100. Uh, down to 5th and Hennepin by the Lumber Exchange. This is on the Como Harriet. And what they did once they got all the PCCs in, is on the lines that had PCCs, because they did it line by line. Um, they basically would have the PCCs run all the base service, and then they would add standard cars for rush hour trippers. And of course, the exception was Ed Nelson, who if he had an all day run, he made them give him a standard car because he didn't like the PCCs. And uh, uh, the quote 
from Ed Nelson's notes that I put in that big article in Twin City Lines one time was Ed had the morning run and he comes into the relief point and the relief uh, motorman says to him, when I saw that old clunk coming, I thought of you. So uh, here we are uh, at 5th and Hennepin. This is where the LRT station is. Turning from the 44th Street right away on the Xerxes on the Oak Harriet line. Uh, 7th and Wabasha in downtown St. Paul. This is on the inner urban. Uh, here's a twofer. This is on Nicollet Avenue at uh, 6th Street. Here's Farmers and Mechanics Bank. And here's one on the University Avenue line crossing Marquette. And this is this weird little Egyptian uh, facaded station that now has a uh, not station building that now has a skyway going right into it. Aaron, is this is this is Marquette, isn't it? That is Marquette. Okay. Right, looking north on Marquette, you can see the main post office down there. Yeah. Yeah, east side station. Uh, Fourth and Wabasha uh, with the Lowry Hotel in the background. You're looking on Fourth Street from the Grand Mississippi line. Uh, Snelling and Minnehaha. This is the uh, uh, Hamlin Cherokee line. You're looking west on Minnehaha across Snelling. And the St. Clair Payne line. This is at uh, Fifth and Rob, uh, pardon me, Seventh and Robert. This is the Donaldson's Golden Rule department store here. And here is a couple of those weird street lights that they had that attached to buildings. Crossing uh, the Bryant Avenue Bridge over Minaha Creek with a bunch of trolley fans in waiting. Glenwood, uh, Glenwood Park, Worth Park. Como Park. Uh, First and uh, Hennepin. 44th and, uh, I guess that'd be 44th and I think uh, Grimes. Okay, that's looking off the Linden Hills Boulevard Bridge right behind the car barn. And looking off the front of the bridge in front of the car barn. Coming in to the depot at 42nd Street. More 42nd Street. This is a long power point. That's why I'm moving right along. Cottage City. And then we got a sub. They took PCC cars out in a couple of places where they had never run before, the rail fans. So this was the one PCC trip to Matamidi along Hamlin Lake, up at the north end of Matamidi. This is it going to Hopkins, uh, just west of Blake Road. Here they are on the inner campus line and they decided, you know, trolley fans like rare mileage. So they went up the freight interchange for a few hundred feet uh, just to do it. Um, and now this was a 1953. This was the, the one that uh, ran the last trip into downtown St. Paul. And uh, so they went all over the place. Here they are at Minnehaha Park and going through the yard at uh, Lake Street Station. And then, of course, the weird trip over the zombie Chicago Avenue line. I think I mentioned last time that uh, uh, the line was converted to bus, but the city required it to uh, run for a few more months with a monthly franchise car. And so since the power the line was energized, they went and ran the fan trip over. So now uh, the cars are sold. Uh, here's a bunch of them that went out to New Jersey Transit and they just sent them out there. They didn't do anything to them. So this is at the New Jersey Transit shops. Here's one of the Mexico City cars at Snelling. It's been all repainted, getting ready to go to Mexico City. Aaron, on the previous slide, that was the PRR main line there on the left of the photo. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, uh, I guess so. And uh, here's uh, the uh, head of maintenance for Twin City Lines talking to the Mexico City head of maintenance and he's given them uh, the new car. And all they did is they kept the number and put a two in front of it. They also had a bunch of cars from Detroit. And 
So here's 315, a sister to 322, headed for Mexico City. And so for Shaker, the Shaker cars were the last ones to go. And they kept some of them as single unit cars, but they equipped others as multiple unit cars. So they had to take off the um, they had to take off the HP lifeguard and put on uh, couplers on the front. And that work was done at Snelling. And so here you see one of the cars that's a single unit car right next to one of the cars that's being modified for um, multiple unit operation at Snelling. And these cars actually didn't get off the property until early 54. Here's the back end of one of them. And you can see in the process, they moved the trolley retriever from up above the window to down below. And once again, uh, here's the, the director of maintenance with one of the cars to go to. Uh, oh, and this is the one that is now at Illinois Railway Museum, 63. Here's one ready to go. So now we have some pictures of them in service elsewhere. These are just pictures I kind of pulled off the internet. And um, this is Mexico City. And they had different color schemes over their time. And at some point they put left-hand doors in them. This is the last of the color schemes. Uh, they later converted a bunch of them to, uh, they looked like lightweight, I mean, pardon me, they looked like LRT cars and they articulated them and they ran into the eighties, I guess. Here's one hand, you can see there's a left-hand door that's been put in this one. Yeah, this is, uh, how they were done. They got new windshields and everything. And according to uh, Frank Hicks' uh, database of preserved, still, still in existence streetcars, this one is still down there at the Mexico City Transit Authority, but not in very good shape. So then- well, Look, it's only got a single stream door in the front there. Yeah, you're right. You, uh, good point. It looks like they've added a window here. Huh. Okay. So <clears throat> here are the cars running on Shaker. This is one of the multiple unit ones. And uh, here's one uh, where it's, uh, it's MU'd with one of their Pullman built cars that were built for Shaker. Well, come back here. So anyway, um, this is car 416. This is the one that we got along with 322. And then we swapped this to Shoreline Trolley Museum for some parts or something. So this is it at Shoreline. They really haven't done much with it yet. But, um, and uh, this is from uh, Jim. This is when we went and visited uh, Bob Diamond at Red Hook in uh, Brooklyn. And I don't know if you saw Railway Preservation News. Bob Diamond just died. Yeah, I just read that. Yeah, he was this kind of um, a gadfly, if you will. And he was trying to get a trolley line built on the Brooklyn waterfront and never happened. And he never gave up. But he, uh, he had gotten a bunch of the, a bunch of the shaker cars had gone to Buffalo where nothing happened with them. And then he got a couple of them uh, and as you can see, it was in terrible shape. I'm sure it's been scrapped now. So here's number 63 again. Um, it was part of the uh, Trolleyville sale uh, where we got the Winona 10 power truck. And it originally went to, gosh, I want to say, I think it went to Northern Ohio. Um, one way or the other, it, uh, Whoever got it didn't want it, and now it went to Illinois Railway Museum. This is a Vicunas photo right here. And so now uh, here are the um, Newark cars in service. I do like that color scheme. In the subway, which was laid in the bed of an old canal. And these guys really, they really got up and ran. And when they finally replaced these with LRTs, uh, the LRVs uh, did not have enough acceleration to make the schedule, and they had to loosen the schedule. And I, just, I should go back here and look at the numbers. Now, that's number eight. 
number 20, number 16. Now, so anyway, then they went through a rebuild. And when they went through the rebuild, they got all new seats. And that's the reason that we wanted 322, is that it was one of the two cars that went to Cleveland in 1978 and never got new seats. And so, uh, because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to restore it back, the interior back to as it was in the Twin Cities. So here's our car, number three, which is 322. And this is it headed for Cleveland in 1978 because Cleveland needed two cars. And it ran there for a few years and then sat outside. Here it is running in Cleveland in its New Jersey colors. And then um, the last round when New Jersey Transit took over, they, they did it in the New Jersey Transit color scheme and they stopped using um, trolley poles, although I think it may be up here, and put pantographs on the front end. So you can see there's pantographs on it. And that's the way they ran for their last years. So now I believe there's a there's still a couple, three of them in New Jersey for what is proposed to be called the New Jersey Transportation Heritage Center. And the, they're all, I think there's three of them there. There's two of them down at the Baltimore Streetcar Museum. There's one at, Conne uh, there's one at Connecticut Trolley Museum. There's two at Shoreline. There's, uh, there's uh, two of them at IRM. Well, I'm sorry, there's one at IRM and then the Shaker Car. There's one at Seashore, there's one at Rock Hill Trolley Museum, and there's one at New York Museum of Transportation. So uh, New Jersey Transit had hung on to all of them for a while, and then they started getting rid of them. So those are the ones what we got here. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's like 10 of them now in museums. Yeah, and, number, six, number six there is... Uh, 325, and then you got the uh, dozen or so in San, Fran San Francisco. I, I was getting to that. Uh, this is at Rock Hill Trolley Museum, and they've restored the thing. And this is the only one I think that is, has been restored yet. There's others that are being worked on. Uh, here's another one. At, this is the one at Baltimore Trolley Museum. Uh, this, I think, is the New York Museum of Transportation. Um, 25, let's see in my list here. Oh, this is also a Shoreline. So, so Shoreline now has two of them. They got 416 from us, which, you know, was unrestored. And then uh, this is one of the later ones. And then, of course, there's one in San Diego that's been fully restored and is running on the LRT system on their downtown and then a waterfront loop. And then, of course, the 11 is San Francisco. And in San Francisco, uh, you know, they, they, they put front poles on them because they do have backup moves. Uh, and they've restored them in, in colors of cities that ran a PCC. So this is in a Mexico City, one of the Mexico City schemes, which would be appropriate for one of these cars. Birmingham, Alabama. So these are all Twin City PCCs. El Paso. And of course, the El Paso cars, which dated from 1936, they were some of the, the very earliest cars. They were put out in the desert when the El Paso line quit, I want to say, in the 80s. And now they build a new trolley line and they completely have restored those things with air conditioning and wheelchair lifts and all. And they're running them again in El Paso. But that's the color scheme. Uh, a couple of views of Cleveland. And um, Los Angeles in the National City Line scheme, Washington, D.C., Toronto, uh, San Diego. Um, this is another Mexico City scheme, Newark, and of course, one painted more or less in our colors. It's the, the yellow is a little too bright, but uh, and then of course ours. And there you go.